So now it's time to uh, speak about CPAS again uh, with my colleague Mathieu Dupré and uh, Florent Cali from RTE. And it will be a bit more technical how to use CPAS to deploy la low latency virtual machines with redundancy. So let's go, guys. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, I hope you were there this morning for the CPAS presentation. Uh, so this, will, this won't be a presentation or an explanation about what CPAS is. Uh, we are going to show you how to install it, configure it, and use it, uh, hopefully in 40 minutes. So I'm Florent. I'm with uh, RTE. Oh, of course, the slide doesn't work. OK. Let's try this way. So RTE is the TSO, the Electricity Transmission System Operator in France. In France. And uh, Mathieu here is from uh, Solar Fire Linux. We're both uh, uh, working on the CPAS project with the LF Energy. So CPAS is the, uh, the configuration project to build a virtualization platform for a, a latency sensitive application, I should say. Um, brief uh, reminder of uh, the architecture. This will be useful to have that in mind for the demonstrations. Uh, usually we think that CPAS has uh, at least three nodes, since it's a cluster, not number of machines. Um, at least two hypervisors, which you can have three, you can have five. And inside each hypervisor, we have uh, loads of uh, technologies that are used to uh, deploy the, the VM in, and manage the VMs. So basically, QNU, KVM, uh, everything running on real time Linux. Uh, and for networking purposes, open the switch. Uh, that would be interesting that to understand that we use open the switch to extend uh, the network from one host to another so that. Mm, uh, VMs can talk to each other even if they are on different uh, hosts and also that if they have to move, if, if they have to migrate from one host to another, uh, for them it's, it's the same, on the, their, their network doesn't change. Um, yeah, um, CPAS uses uh, both Debian and uh, Yocto. It can be uh, run on top of Debian or on a custom uh, Yocto distribution. So CPAS uh, use uh, differ in the image creation. For Debian, we use a full automatic installation to create the Debian uh, ISO machine, which, which will be flashed on the disk later. And on Yocto, you use, uh, of course, uh, Yocto to create the image. Um, the, setup, uh, the setup is done with uh, Ansible uh, in CPAS. And uh, the Ansible setup is uh, similar uh, for both versions. But actually, there is two branches, a Debian main branch and a main branch with uh, is, uh, actually the Yocto branch. We plan to merge the both branches in the future, so the setup will be the same for uh, Ansible and Debian. But for the moment, it, it differs. Um, for the usage, it, uh, it's similar in usage. Both the CPAS version uh, use the same tools and uh, can use the same Ansible playbook. So yeah, so of course uh, all the f following demo will be, uh, ex except for the image creation part, will be uh, can be used for both Debian and uh, Yocto version. So uh, to use CPAS, you need uh, of course a machine. It is, it is important to have a node number of machines because uh, in CPAS you have a cluster and uh, we need uh, to to have a quorum to vote and uh, a quorum occur on a node number. You also need, uh, of course, uh, a flash image. We can, you can use a, yes, a flash image in, uh, in a USB drive. And uh, all the setup is done by Ansible. We made the Ansible playbook to, to do the setup. But the inventory uh, need to be customized by each uh, installation. I will present you the, me the media creation. Uh, to, I, I will begin with the Yocto version. For the Yocto version, it, it's based, uh, it, it is a regular uh, Yocto installation. You, you have to fetch uh, the source. We use a repo to do that, so you have to use uh, the repo manifest and use a repo sync to fetch the source. Um, in CPAS, you have to, to put your uh, SSH key in, uh, during the image question uh, step. So image, the SSH key will be used uh, for the setup uh, in the setup step by Ansible. So you have to put it in the keys directory. 
You can also, if you want, uh, customize uh, some little aspect using the cspass.com file. Uh, you can, uh, based on the cspass.com sample to do that, you can change, for instance, uh, the key map and a lot of small things. Uh, after you do that, you can uh, build your U2 distribution uh, using Big Bake, or we made a, a tool, a custom tool uh, named CQFD. We can help to do that. Uh, it's just uh, two commands, CQFD init to, it will initiate uh, and create uh, a Docker with all the, uh, all you need to build a, a U2 distribution and CPaaS. And after you are just to, to run CQFD to run to, to build uh, the image. We do not uh, have a demo for the CPAS version because it's a very long uh, building. But I can show you what we do for the Debian based image. Uh, I'll try to do the demonstration live as much as possible. Uh, of course, uh, many times it, it, it takes some time, so we have also uh, videos that, we, that, that will help to show things that take uh, more time. But for, uh, for building a Debian version, it's as simple as going to any uh, uh, Linux machine with uh, basically Docker on it. Uh, you find a repo, uh, you clone the, the repository. Before, I, I, I should say that everything is documented here. So if you start the, the, your CPAS journey at the CPAS architecture repo, it will explain that there is a, a Yocto way of doing things or a Debian way of doing things you have to choose. Uh, if you choose a Yocto, then uh, you go to this repo and that will help you uh, use Bitbake to build uh, the image. Uh, if you choose Debian, you go to this repo and uh, that will help you also create uh, installation media. It's as simple as running one command just uh, before you need to do some man man mandatory customization that I will show you. So you clone the repo, uh, you go to the folder. I hope it's, 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 it's uh, big enough. Uh, anyway, oh, I can that. Uh, then it will tell you that you need to copy the default uh, variable to uh, the actual variable file. So you copy the default variable here to uh, the actual variable file and you edit it with your own settings. You can change the key map, the time zone. Uh, you can change the, the ashes of the, of the default password, the, the default username. You can set, and you have to, uh, it's, it's better to set the SSH key that you will use to connect to the machine. That way you won't even have to put a keyboard uh, or a console to the server. You can directly access uh, the, 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 the deployed server with, uh, with, uh, with networking. For that, you have to set up some networking with a default interface, some IP address, and everything will be built in the image. Once you deploy the server, it will already have networking, it will already have, have uh, credentials, and this is what I, I will show you right now. You go to uh, the folder you want to build the image in, you run the command that's uh, written uh, in the readme, and basically it will uh, create a Docker, a, a Docker container to, for the environment. It will download all the package, it will build the image, and it will provide you with uh, an ISO file. Uh, it takes about five to 10 minutes, so I won't <laughs> show you uh, this. And uh, like I said, I have, uh, I have a video for, for the next step uh, that will uh, show you. Don't, let's go at the end of the video. Uh, you, you, so at the end of the video is basically, you have your ISO file. Uh, to test it, we're going to create a, a VM. Of course, in the real world, you will use a, a real hardware. You will get the ISO file. You will uh, set it as a, as a virtual disk, and then you will run the machine. And what will happen is FAI so, so is going gonna, is gonna to boot. You don't have to touch anything. Uh, it will deploy a Debian version uh, with the, the CPAS specs, which is basically a list of packages. There is no configuration done beside uh, having a list of the needed software and, like I said, some networking and some default credentials so that you can uh, access the machine easily uh, after deployment. So if I go to the end of deployment, once again, it will take like five to six minutes to, to deploy everything automatically, download the package, and in the end, it will reboot the machine. No, I just, I'm going to show you. <laughs> If we go to the end of the process, it will reboot the machine, boot the new Debian system, which is once again completely empty. It only has a, a list of installed packages. And once the machine has been booted, uh, since you have configured your network and your credential, it will be as easy as, or uh, well, you can check in the console that the IP has been set as you wanted. And then you will go to your favorite SSH client and uh, connect directly to the server. Of course, you will have to do that three times uh, for each of your uh, server. 
uh, like it's written in the documentation there. Once you have done that, you connect, you interconnect uh, your nodes. There is, it's still long, there is a documentation on how you should do that with some STP configuration and, and so on. Uh, we won't go into details here. Uh, once your cluster network is created, then you can go to the appropriate De uh, Ansible uh, branch. So if you're using Debian, it's this branch. And, uh, and this documentation will help you configure the servers. That's what Mathieu is going to show you right now. Yes, uh, now we have uh, all, all, yes, all the machine uh, is flash. You can uh, set up Ansible. Uh, you can uh, set up the cluster with Ansible. So you can use a playbook uh, in the Ansible repository. Playbook will uh, perform action, but you have to, to tell uh, on, which, on which machine you, you have to apply the, the action, the task, and uh, you have to set parameter. With Ansible, uh, it is in the inventory, you, do, you can do that. There is several ways to, to write inventory in Ansible. We choose to, to do it in uh, YAML and to bring together uh, machine and, uh, and uh, associated variable. So all the uh, scroll up, scroll up. Yeah. all the, the machines uh, need to be placed in the cluster machine group and uh, hypervisor in the hypervisor group. Here uh, it is an example uh, which is uh, you can uh, have in the Ansible repository. Uh, we have three machines on it. Uh, yes, node one, node two, and node three. Uh, on each node, uh, we define a variable. Uh, the, for, for instance, the uh, Ansible host is a uh, ans default Ansible variable uh, to, in which uh, Ansible will use to, to connect uh, in SSH and connect to the machine and run the, the task. The other is a uh, is CPAS uh, custom variable, for instance, to, to define a network IP uh, or uh, other parameter. A variable can be placed in, uh, in just in the, in the machine, uh, near the machine, if, if it is a uh, machine specific, but it can also be uh, global if it apply uh, for all machines. To the clear surface, you also need to, to, to place the, the machine in the, just scroll up a little, uh, just a little down. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Here. No, 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 it, it was perfect. <laughs> okay. um, you have to, to set the, the host in the man, in the man uh, group for all the, uh, the machine will be in the, in the cluster and in the client group and the machine will uh, store data need to be placed in the UDS uh, group. Who is this? Who is this? Who is this? So, so, sorry. Uh, group, yeah. Uh, I think I can now show you a demo of the setup. It is an accelerated uh, 100 time uh, demo. Um, to call Ansible, you need to call Ansible playbook command. And you have to pass the playbook you want. Here is a cluster setup Debian and the inventory in which uh, the action will be set up. It is your, invent your inventory you have uh, just write it. Yes. Um, it is uh, how uh, Ansible works. You can see uh, all the tasks will be which is performed and on the, which mach machine it uh, it uh, it's running. You have a state two uh, if the task is keeping or if it is just run and uh, change something. It, it, it is uh, displaying green and uh, okay. If it change something, it is in yellow and uh, it, it is uh, white and change. And if there is an error, it, it is uh, in a way uh, with a fail. Uh, at the end, you have uh, a little recap of all uh, the steps. Yeah. Yeah. Is that very important? It's yeah, it is. And the time. Uh, Good. Yeah. You okay. can. So the next step is. Uh, Yes, networking. Yeah, yes, networking. So, like I said before, we are trying. We are using Open vSwitch to extend the bridges from one host to another and to make the hosts communicate with to, to each other in the most simple way. Um, of course, once again, uh, we are using Ansible for that. So, we are using Ansible to configure, Ansible to 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 manage guest networking. We are also using Ansible for security and and, and for basically everything. Uh, so, I'm going to try to do uh, this demo live. It's going to be uh, interesting. 
Um, so the idea is to go to uh, an hypervisor. So I have three hypervisors. They are called Elabo 1, 2, and 3. I'm, I'm going to call them Node 1, Node 2, and Node 3. And they are, are not running VMs. Right now, so the, the VMs are shut, are shut down. And I'm going to show you how we're going to try to make uh, Debian, this VM, uh, which is actually not running, communicate with uh, Debian 2. So we are with Debian, Debian 2. We're going to have Debian running on uh, Node 1, Debian 2 running on Node 2. Uh, we can also have Debian 3 running on Node 3. And uh, we're going to do what we need to make them communicate. So the first thing we need to show you is that if we run uh, open v uh, OVS um, uh, control show, we can see all the configuration. And um, up, we can see that there is no Debian interface. There is no uh, deb interface. So we're going to create them. Uh, up, up, use, use Ansible to, uh, to, to push them on the server and then configure the VMs so that they can connect to those interfaces and then run the VMs and see if they can communicate to each other. Let's do that. So for that, we're going to go to our uh, Ansible server because everything will be done not online, not on the server, but with infra as code. Uh, let's go to Ansible. And uh, there is an inventory for the cluster, which I showed you. There is also an inventory for, uh, for the networking, for the guest networking. Let me find the one. Uh, uh, sorry. So we're going to use uh, this one. And this inventory, this OVS net inventory, will be the topology. Uh, the, 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 the open switch topology that the cluster will emulate. So you can create bridges, you can extend bridges from one host to another, and you can connect your bridge, to, you can create interfaces for your VM to connect to the bridge, and you can connect your bridge to physical interfaces if you want to extend your bridge to the outside of the cluster. Uh, so what I'm going to show you is that, yeah, I've prepared this. So we're going to create three interfaces in the bridge, which is called uh, VRPO, uh, and uh, we are going to just add three uh, interfaces on the topology. And once we've done that, uh, we're going to run the playbook, which is called network. So once again, there is no, right now, no, no interface with that, to that name. We're going to run the, the playbook, and the playbook will take the configuration in the, in the, in the inventory and create this configuration on uh, the clusters. So well, that's this, this step, basically. So once this step is done, OK, we should yeah, go and see that the interfaces have been created. And they have been created on all servers. So wh wherever the, the, the VM will be, uh, it will have an interface that it can connect to. So the next step is to uh, go to the VM, to the VM configuration, and tell it to connect to this interface. So we have uh, custom tools to do that. For instance, this is our, call, uh, our tool where we can edit all the, the metadata of the VM. And if we go to Debian 1, uh, we can go to the XML of the VM. So this is everything. The, this is a VM configuration, basically. And uh, if I if I go there, I see I need to add so this kind of XML that say basically create an interface uh, on a, a bus zero, a PCI bus zero slot two. That will be important for, for later. Uh, it's not managed because it has been created by OpenV switch and uh, use a Debian 1.1. And on uh, the second machine. Debian 2, we do the same thing. Up, why did I do that? Here, yeah, same thing. So use the PSI slot 2, Debian 2.1, not manage. Once we have done that, we just have to run the VM basically. So um, let me show you that the VM is not running. I'm going to use a tool that uh, Mathieu will show you a little more in detail later. And we're going to run Debian. Oh, this is warning. Don't worry, it works. And we're going to run Debian 2. And we're also going to run Debian 3 because, hey, why not? We'll do live migration tests later. That, that will be useful. And uh, since we are in Elabo 1, we can check that the VM Debian is started in Elabo 1. So if we run libvirt, we can see that the VM is actually running. And if we are curious of what's happening on the VM, we can also connect to the console and check that it's uh, properly booting. <laughs> So we can. This is the VM booting, basically. And once it's once it's uh, it's been uh, booted, we can uh, connect to it, and we can check that there is uh, an ESP zero S two. That was the bus and slot with the PCI information, and we can we we have an IP. Uh, this has been uh, configured before, and uh, you, we can connect to the machine. And uh, since we have the same thing with uh, 
Uh, so it's going to take a few, time, a few minutes, so, no, a few seconds. And if we go to Elabo 2, so the node 2, the second node, and uh, we can check once again that the uh, Debian 2 VM is running on Elabo 2, we can verify it's, it's the case. So basically we have two nodes, one VM on each node, and the idea is to see whether we can ping one from the other. And it works. So basically we have two VMs and they are discussing together through an, 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 an OVS bridge that I'm extended using uh, the XLAN. The XLAN. Um, let's talk about infrastructure. Uh, no, so now for, for this one, I'll probably use the video because it's a bit more complicated to show live. Uh, the idea is that you understand that we use basically Ansible for everything, and um, we also, we, since it's uh, very important, we all, all very often get the question of how we manage cyber, cyber security. Since on this version, we're relying on, on Debian for the patches, th this is a, a no-brainer, we're delegating to Debian, but for uh, the configuration, we might have to change things because the, na the national agency says that we have to apply a specific specific settings that that is a, a vulnerability so let me um, go to the video we're gonna go a bit quick on the video but the, the idea the, the the example I chose is to have a, for instance a, sec a secret file let's say we call it secret and this file is uh, uh, readable by everyone on the server and let's say uh, we need uh, because uh, we heard from some, some somewhere that this is a vulnerability and that we need to change the permission on this file. Well, since we're using Enfras code, it's pretty easy to go to the Ansible playbook to add a task that will say, okay, this file, uh, you need, it, it needs to, to belong to root and to have a, a 600 mode, so basically only a readable and writable by root. Uh, and once we've done that, we apply the cluster, we apply the playbook, we reload, and we see that uh, everything has been uh, has been done and we won't even have to connect to the machine. So if we have many clusters to manage, it's pretty easy. And the second thing we want to show is that it can also help with compliance because the idea is that Ansible is pretty good at showing you that it had to change something, uh, which is not the case if the settings was correct in the first place. So that this is normal, this is a new setting, so it changed. If we, I reapply the playbook, I shouldn't, it shouldn't have to, to change because uh, but if there is some uh, uh, malicious, uh, <laughs> malicious uh, threat actor that, uh, for instance, uh, uh, change uh, the, the permission, so I'm going to show you first that if you, if you reapply the playbook, then Ansible will show you that nothing has changed. Everything, oh, sorry, <sighs> sorry, I say again. If the malicious actor um, change, for instance, the mode of the file and put it to 660, uh, or on another on other server, change the owner of the file, so if you have to, then I will say that this mode is not correct, sorry, this mode is not correct, this owner is not correct, and if I reapply the playbook, first I can check that the playbook will correct, once again, it's the job, but it can also show me that uh, on virtue level two, it, everything was fine, but on virtue level one and three, there had to be changed. So we can use Ansible to detect any uh, cybersecurity uh, uh, issue or, or problem. So it would be a recommendation, even if there is no change, uh, to reapply the playbook regularly just to monitor that the number of uh, change items doesn't, uh, doesn't increase, which would uh, mean that someone is playing with, a with the servers. And yeah, we put this to the next level by implementing a playbook that does m a lot more than that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so uh, we we use this to to implement the French agency uh, cyber security agency uh, rules uh, BP28 uh, um, on on Cible, uh, on Debian on version on YouTube version is done otherwise uh, during the build time. I will uh, detail that uh, in the in the, lat the latest uh, call with uh, Enguerrand. Um, so we made a playbook with uh, Arden Debian following this guide. Um, I, mm, you can run the, the demo. Yeah. It's going to be very yeah. quick. If I remember so the, the playbook uh, is running as the same as uh, the setup playbook. You can see uh, it changes. Uh, yeah. Back. Uh, 
Ah, is this a, a, some chase? Uh, the interesting part of this playbook, is, it is you can check uh, the rules are applied by, by Ansible, but you can also revert all the, the Ardolin uh, playbook. It is useful uh, if you to, to, to place your, uh, your, all your uh, cluster in a debug mode because uh, the hardening rules, uh, with hardening rules, you can't use uh, regular uh, debug, uh, debug tools. It's not uh, a mode you use for development, it's really a, a production mode. Yeah. Right? So since you have to work, or we still have to work on the server, we'd like to be able to unharden the system if, if needed. It is a load stuff, you can run it if you want. This is uh, how yeah. we unharden. As simple as that. Yes. So one playbook T to harden. This is just uh, one command. Yeah. One playbook to unharden. So once again, Playbooks for everything, playbook for cyber security, playbook for compliance. Um, and now, so we've thought about installing CPAS, we've thought about configuring CPAS, hardening CPAS, managing cyber security. Now we're going to talk about using CPAS. And uh, Mathieu will tell you about the VMs. Yes, because uh, the VM part is uh, complex in CPAS. We use uh, multiple tools because uh, there is uh, the virtualization, but also the cluster part. and. Uh, uh, we, it, it is done with uh, different tools. The virtualization is done by KVM, KV, KVM, and QEMU together. It can be it can be managed uh, with libvirt. We use libvirt to, to control KVM and QEMU. But uh, KVM QEMU rely on safe to to use uh, uh, it uh, because safe stores the, the disk, the VM disk inside it, and uh, distribute it in all the cluster. The distribution storage is done by safe. Don't, so QEMU KVM have to read and, uh, and uh, dialogue with uh, with safe, and you but you cannot directly uh, manage safe with uh, Livert and KVM QEMU. So and there is also the, the the failover part and the closer part, which is done by KVM and Pacemaker. And KVM and Pacemaker have a limited control on Livert, but have no control on Safe. So we made tools uh, above uh, on that. We we made three tools: uh, a Python module which is called uh, VM Manager, which is a uh, command line interface uh, VM MGA, and uh, an non-civil plugin which we call uh, which rely on VM Manager. Uh, and of course, uh, the associated uh, playbook uh, which we use uh, on simple playbook. Yeah. So the idea is you can use VM Manager to manually deal with the VMs, but since we are in love with Ansible, we expose all these uh, services uh, to uh, an Ansible module that, that means you can use Ansible to manage the VM as well. Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, we have a demo of uh, the command line. This is just a bit uh, of the command line uh, interface, uh, VM MGR. Here, the, this is uh, the helper. You can do uh, all the basic things: uh, create VM, remove VM, uh, list of VM. Some uh, advancing uh, uh, options uh, are also here. You, get, you can create a snapshot, a reverse snapshot, and you can also uh, define some uh, cluster uh, rules. For instance, you can uh, add uh, collocation rules to, to tell. Uh, the VM uh, you need to always be run on the same machine as another VM. It can be useful if you do not have a, an extended uh, network on all the, the cluster, but you have just a private network to, to communicate between the two VM for uh, performance reasons, for instance. Um, yes, I can. This it is uh, an example how to create a, a, a VM. You just need to, to, to have a, a name. Yes, okay. You just, it is running now? Yeah. Okay. You, you have to, to set the name, the, the disk you want to use, and uh, the uh, libvirt XML configuration. And the command will uh, deploy the, the disk image on safe and create the, the VM and configure Pacemaker to, to do all the, the cluster configuration. Yes, now the, the VM is created. You, you can see with uh, VM statue, uh, it, this is uh, the VM is started. You can uh, do all the. Yeah, this is an, uh, just another uh, example with another tools, uh, which is, which is uh, pacemaker control tools, uh, CRM, 
you can see uh, our demo VM is created. Uh, you can also see where the, mach the machine is, is running uh, the VM, uh, on which uh, machine the VM is running. Here it is the MD machine. And now, uh, for the demo, uh, the, uh, I will remove the, the machine. Stop it before and uh, remove it after. So you can stop the VM, which uh, it will be still on the cluster, but yeah. it will be in the stop state. You can disable the VM. The VM is still in safe cluster, ready to be enabled, but it's not on the pacemaker cluster. Or you can remove the VM, and it will remove it completely for CPAS, from CPAS. And the disk is, uh, is clear. So this, this is a demo. OK, we got time. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, on CPAS, uh, we have to deal with uh, real-time constraint to, in order to have a uh, low latency low network, for instance. Um, this is a particular uh, VM. They have to be pinned on a specific uh, CPU and we, because you have to use CPU resolution if you want to, to have uh, a good uh, real-time. Um, we also need to, to use uh, the real-time scheduler. Okay. And um, some libvirt tweak. I will just, uh, all uh, all this configuration is uh, all we do, we done by CPAS. I have just a, a quick demo uh, which shown uh, the cyclic test uh, tools and uh, how uh, it differs between a real time VM and uh, a regular VM. On the top, this is uh, the max latency uh, on the regular VM. And on bottom, the, the, real, um, the latency on the real-time uh, VM. Yeah, this is the kind of latency we're expecting from the guests. And uh, yeah, let's talk about live migration and also failover migration. Uh, once again, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to try to do it live because it's, it's funnier that way. Uh, so let's go back to our cluster, same as before, the same VMs. No cheating. So we have three VMs running on uh, different hypervisors. Um, let's connect to the first one, for instance. So the first one is Debian. Is Debian. And uh, so we have booted it 13 minutes ago. That was for the last demonstration. And uh, we're going to have a ping it Debian 2. So both VMs are there, and they're pinging each other. Let's say you want to move a VM because you want to better balance your cluster, you want to do a test or whatever. So it's very easy to manually move a VM using a pacemaker. Uh, you use uh, the CRM tool, and you say you want to move Debian to, for instance, uh, E3. And if you check what's happening in CRM at that time, you're going to see that the, the VM Debian is migrating. So the memory of the VM is going to be transferred uh, from one host to another. Uh, and then once the when the memory are synced on both hosts, then uh, pacemaker will, uh, or libvirt will, uh, yeah, s switch. And so we can see that now the VM is running on the third node, and the VM has, hasn't stopped pinging. It doesn't even notice that it has been live migrated. So that's pretty, pretty nice. And um, of course, you can move it back. But before we move back, uh, we're going to try something, we're going to say, okay, we have now two VMs running on eLabo3. Uh, let's say we want to do an operation on, on eLabo3. You want to reboot it, you want to apply security updates, you want to do some serious maintenance, maintenance and you don't want any VM running on it. Once again, with CRM, it's pretty easy to, de to ask it to put the node in standby. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on standby, and at the meantime, I'm going to show you what's happening at the cluster level. So I'm going to say, OK, put stand node 3 in standby. So the node 3 is going to be standby. And all the resources running on node 3 are going to be migrated. That's all. So we're going to wait a few seconds for the uh, VMs to be migrated. And we are migrating Debian and Debian 3. And once again, we can see that Debian 1 and 2 will be pinging each other with, uh, with, no, with no impact. And uh, then, um, OK, so that, that's, that's it. It's done. OK, so now no VMs are running on eLabo3. We can check. We can go to eLabo3. And we can say, OK, uh, do you have any, uh, any VM running? We'll say no. OK. And then we're going to say, OK, I'm, I'm done with my operation. I want a node back online. So if I put the node back online, then 
uh, the cluster automatically say, okay, I'm going to migrate the VMs back there because you asked for the VM to be running on Elabo3. Uh, so Elabo3 <laughs> Elabo is still uh, is, uh, is, is up and running, so, so basically it's going to migrate there. And once it's done, the final test I want to show you uh, is what happens if we crash basically Elabo3. So let's, let's have the VM still running on Elabo3 and we're gonna, we're gonna crash the node. So what will happen, of course, it, can't, it won't be able to migrate the, the VM because the memory will be lost, uh, but uh, at least it can restart the VM somewhere else. So to crash Elabo3, I'm gonna go to Elabo3, and I'm gonna do something that you should never do. Uh, I'm gonna uh, sync the disk so that, uh, up, this is the only real way to, to reboot a server. Uh, thank you. So I'm gonna reboot the server very, very, uh, badly. <laughs> and tap. So at that moment, everything is crashed, the server is down. Uh, the VM can't ping, I can't, everything is down. The cluster will very uh, promptly notice that the host is down, and uh, it will, uh, as soon as possible, start the VM somewhere else. And it had decided to run Debian on Elabo 1 and Debian 3 on Elabo 1 once again. Of course, the VM has, have crashed, that's normal. Uh, but they will be restarted in a timely manner, at least in like 30 seconds. And so if we wait 30 seconds, then we will be able to connect back to the uh, machines. We can even monitor uh, the, boot, the boot process if we like and, and connect to it as soon as they boot it. And during that time, I'm gonna end the presentation or the failover that that's what we just done. So, this is, it was our last demonstration. The VM is, is still booting. Uh, in the meantime, uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, with the CPAS project, we have many resources. We have a, a wiki, a website, a GitHub. We have a Slack, and uh, uh -huh. very recently, we have a YouTube channel where we'll be uploading all the videos you've seen today, and more, and hopefully the community will continue to upload video uh, and tutorials and explanation on how CPAS works to this channel. So don't hesitate to go there. and. Uh, we are available for some questions if you have any. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So it was quite uh, technical. I guess you've got a lot of questions. Again, so most of the video are available on YouTube, and we, we make sure to, uh, to upload uh, as much content uh, as we could do. So if you have any questions, yes, sure. Thank you for the presentation. Exists also a life cycle for a disk upgrade? Disk upgrade? What do you yes, mean? Yes, you use Debian, and the Debian life cycle is around three, four years, and you have to make a disk upgrade mm, uh, for security reasons. So, uh, is, exists also some disk upgrade mechanism? Well, the, the, uh, I'm not sure I understand the question, but the upgrade mechanism we are, rely, we are relying on. The, well, the host itself. The host itself. The host itself is, yes. is running Debian, so basically we are rely, relying on Debian, so if we want to upgrade, uh, then uh, we are we're going to use Debian. Uh, to secure the upgrade, we are using uh, LVM snapshots, so our recommendation, and there is a documentation on the, on the GitHub also, uh, it's, it's if you want to do some, uh, well, I'm going I'm to show you the, the best way. Uh, tick, tick, well, well back, yeah. So yeah, the, um, if you want to upgrade, what we, rec what we recommend is to do a snapshot of the root file system, uh, then to mm, check the snapshot is working, to do the upgrade you want to do, or any change you want to do, and uh, if it goes wrong for any reason, uh, then you can also always roll back. Uh, if it does uh, not, you can uh, discard the snapshot. I, I'm not sure that that, that, that answers your question, but... Uh. Okay, thanks, <laughs> And uh, just in the meantime, just to show you that the host has been rebooted and so that the cluster has uh, decided to move the VM uh, back on the node since it's uh, back online and clean. So the, thank you very much for the presentation. So it's great to see the guidelines for Debian. Do you have also the same recommendation for Yocto using a packet uh, server or, or, or elsewhere? Uh, in in Yocto, uh, all the, the hardening rules is done uh, during the image creation. We also uh, apply a BP28 uh, uh, 
rules, uh, I will present uh, in more detail with Enguerrand uh, in the last session. Uh, but in Yocto, session. you can also have the package management. That's why I was asking what ah, uh, no, 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 no. In Yocto, you use uh, software update and uh, PC active uh, okay. slot. Yeah. Two partitions. Yeah. System A, B. Yeah. 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 Thanks. Thank you. Last quick question, maybe? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.